Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over the Game Jam winners for the Let's Create Game Jam number 2. This was hosted last month and it went over two weeks. I want to say a massive thank you for everyone entering and participating and a massive congratulations to everyone that submitted a game. It's not easy to complete a Game Jam and you learn so much and it tests so many of your skills. So to those who entered, even if you didn't um, win, You've done an amazing job and hopefully you got something valuable out of this. I also wanted to say thank you to everyone in the Discord community. I, s I got back into the Discord for this game jam and I kind of fixed it all up. And you've all been amazing. You've all been helping each other out and communicating. So it's been amazing. It's been really nice to see people supporting each other. And because of this, it's inspired me to keep the Discord going and uh, maintain it. So I will be promoting it and using it um, for the rest of YouTube. So yeah, thank you all again. And thank you all to the, thank you to all the moderators. With that out of the way, let's dive into the top three games for the Let's Create Game Jam number two. Our first game on the list is Back in Time. This came third place, developed by Naughted Games, and it got second for innovation. It has a really interesting rewind mechanic, similar to Braid, but it is very different when you play it in a kind of 3D world from an isometric view. So, uh, this is the tutorial stage. We can move around. You'll see the character has the hourglass on its back, which represents its ability of rewinding time. And um, I really like the fact that they get this an uh, character in and animated. The world's quite nice. It's very simple. And we come to our first puzzle. So, something to keep in mind in this game, it is tracking every step we take. If I was to left click now, it rewinds through each of our steps. So you need to be careful about how long you stand in a certain place for, because every every time I'm standing here, it's actually um, recording. So if I left click, it's dramatically going to drain my uh, left click ability. So when I go through here, I can right click, collect the gem and rewind time and that will allow me to get through the door. But as you can see, the longer you, you take in these individual spaces, uh, the longer your rewind goes down. So you need to be careful about your steps and where you move to. And that, that is the end puzzle for the first map. It's a shame that they couldn't expand upon the first map a bit more. They have a bunch of assets here. It would have been great to just get out uh, a second level using these assets or expand upon this. But it is difficult in game jams. So we come across the second stage, and this is actually the last stage in the game. So we have this enemy here, which apart from pressuring us to move around and to step around, it's not very threatening. The challenge comes when you do something like this. So let's say I stand here and I open this. Whoops, say that again. So open it, I'm just gonna stand here, go through. You'll see the enemies just standing there, right? Now, if I backtrack, I only have 15 seconds of backtracking. And I'm standing here for so long that I'm down to nine now. So the the trick is that you need to be really smart with how long you wait outside of these doors. So you need to actually play it quite quickly. If you play slowly, you'll run out of time and you'll run into this enemy. And this one, but if you can manage, you can probably squeeze in if you're quick enough, which I was not. So let's do that again. Let's run around. So I'm gonna bait him over here. Let's rewind. Rewind. And the final rewind. So this is a really interesting mechanic. I like the way they took it with this puzzle, having an enemy. Uh, the first stage was interesting as well. I think you could do a bunch of, a variety of uh, puzzles. Um, it would be great to see this expanded upon. I like seeing this rewind mechanic that we've seen in Braid from a, a 3D perspective. I haven't played any games that use rewinds from a 3D perspective, I don't believe. So with this uh, new perspective, you might be able to create puzzles that can make this a very different game from Braid. So it would be awesome to see this with a kind of upgraded art style, a few more levels and more polished mechanics. 
for a first playable. I think this is worth uh, developing into a first playable, and it would be great to check it out. So, to the um, Knotted Knotted Games team, great job on the game and coming third place. The second place winner is Psychic Rubber by Naris. This is a really cool game. Um, you play as this rubber and you have psychic abilities which help you get through the environment, detect cameras, field of vision, you can shoot telekinesis, uh, pick up objects, and a bunch of really cool stuff. So it's a kind of a stealth-based approach. So you right-click to enable your psychic vision, and it's really nice how it highlights the cameras for you. And then you can middle mouse to go invisible. So something like this and you can sneak through. But you need to manage your kind of uh, energy bars up here, like resources. So you need to be smart in um, when you're using them and letting them recharge. So with this enemy over here, we need to use something called a, a telekinetic blast. So you just uh, left click. Oops, just gotta wait for them. There we go. There's a certain range, which I can't figure out. It would have been good to have a UI or something to indicate the range, but um, this is great for a game jam. So here there are these uh, lasers. And uh, something that would have been really cool to make this a bit more fair is if you had some a metal uh, kind of ground texture here, just to represent that something's different. Uh, at the moment, apart from the tutorial, you have no reason to check uh, apart from the game telling you here. So it would have been cool to visually just show it off a little. Uh, but with this one, it's the same as the uh, security cameras. So you just go through the laser field. Collect some money. Oh, and there's a uh, key here. So that key will give you extra money when you open the vault. And I really like this idea of collecting stuff. It's really fun. I, I love games with loot. It's always a good time. So now that I have uh, picked up the key, I can left click and get the money. And I just got 28k. So now we're going to hit play and go to the second level. And now there are no real tutorials here, so let's figure this out. So I've got to use a wave on him. Uh, sneak through here. I've got to wait for it to recharge. Sneak through. And let's go. Oh, just made it. <laughs> So here, this is interesting. I've got to um, get this key. Make sure there's nothing else. Uh, another camera. And uh, what I can do here is I can open this and I can collect it while I'm invisible. So there we go. And that is Psychic Robot. I like the abilities and the gameplay is really fun. I believe this is worth uh, further developing. I would try and design a way to make the gameplay a bit more uh, dynamic. So it would be really interesting if the cameras moved. Um, it would make me manage my energy a bit differently, the vision energy. Uh, taking out the guards is a bit too easy. Um, with the If you add something like moving cameras and the blast, instead of having a separate energy gauge, it took away um, the vision gauge, I would have to manage taking out the guard while staying invisible to the cameras, which would be a much more interesting dynamic. So yeah, I really like uh, what you've built here for the game jam. It would be awesome to see this further developed, improving upon the um, graphics for the game, the kind of art style, and improving upon the core mechanics, because I really like the core mechanics here. And of course, looting is really fun. Obviously, you can't... Um, oh, that's not a button. The hideout. Uh, also, another thing, when you loot, it would be cool um, if this kind of like stacked up more. I'm not sure if it did. I forget what this looked like at the start of the game. But it'd be awesome if your kind of money was appearing. Um, even <laughs> if you could like buy stuff from your fake computer. That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, great job to Psychic Rubber, um, to Naris on this game. And congratulations for getting second place. The... Winner of the Let's Create Game Jam number two is Spirit by uh, Mundane Games. So congratulations to Mundane Games. Spirit is really interesting. You have a mechanic where you press left click and you basically um, 
see two worlds. The first world is this dark, depressing world that you see behind you. It's a destroyed world. The second world is more of a bright, lit up world where you can see uh, these kind of spirit orbs that you need to collect. And they have some interesting kind of puzzles implemented, especially in the second level. So this first level is just to teach you the uh, base mechanics. So you're stuck in this room, there's nothing to really do. If you start clicking around, you will hit left click and the first lost spirit is in here. And this kind of passageway opens up into this main, uh, the main hub of this uh, level. So you got this red chair here, which is where one of them is sitting. You've got this room over here, which we can run into, run out of. And there's another one on top of this staircase. And it's a really interesting idea going between two crumbled uh, worlds, uh, between two worlds, I should say. I've, a lot of people mess around with this mechanic, but I haven't really uh, seen it implemented in a game yet. So it's really interesting. Let's go through, uh, left. And here is the last one for this first level. So yeah, when you collect them all, the room is cleansed. This second level is my favorite. I really like games. Uh, levels where it challenges your visual memory so this is really cool you'll see all these separated platforms and you can't jump in this game so if i was to go into the other realm uh you'll see it's a nice kind of it's filled out there are no empty spaces however i do not have the ability to just run through and collect all of them as i ran out out of the uh ability whatever the ability is so i have to go onto a platform like this and I can run through to the next one in this world. So let's see, that's the next point I want to get to. So I can run here, go back. And you just have to have a memory of where it is, how many tiles ahead of you things are. And yeah, this is a mechanic that I really enjoy because having to remember where things are is quite fun. Probably not everyone's uh, thing, but I definitely enjoy it. Whoa, <laughs> close. And there we go. <laughs> so yeah, that was probably one of my favorite rooms because it has a really interesting twist on the mechanic. Uh, this level is a bit more like the first where you're kind of just uh, finding the orbs. So while still good, I think the second one really shows off interesting gameplay that you can do with this. I think it could be really interesting if there were um, kind of enemy, like not necessarily enemies, but things moving around in both environments. Uh, I think I made a mistake earlier when I said I hadn't seen this in a game, really. I've seen this in Dishonored 2 and also in uh, Titanfall 2. Yeah, I really enjoyed this mechanic in Titanfall 2. So um, in Titanfall 2, you can go between both worlds and it makes use of your platforming abilities. So, uh, yeah, it, while this is awesome, especially for a game jam game, the second level in this is probably my favorite because it makes a really interesting gameplay out of the mechanic, whereas this is kind of like more of the first level. So I'm curious to see what a developer, because when you look at, um, Dishonored 2 and Titanfall, they kind of just use this, this mechanic in a singular level. It'd be interesting to see what a developer could do if they use this for the entire game and really push the mechanic. And the uh, final one is here. So before I collect this, I just wanted to say that this is really great and I enjoyed it. And um, I would love to see what you could do with this in the future, uh, mundane games, what you could add to this, how you could make it more interesting. And I think your second level is amazing. Um, first level is great to teach. The second level just twists it and makes it so much fun. I'd love to see more things like the second level where um, you're challenging a few of my different skills. So it would be interesting to do levels where you might challenge sound. You've challenged my memory. Uh, you could challenge uh, reflexes and my platforming abilities. You could do a bunch of stuff with this type of mechanic. So yeah, great work. Congratulations on getting first place. And I hope you continue developing this. I hope you enjoyed this look at the top three games. 
There will be a spotlight video coming out soon, and this will have all of the games that people have posted like a 10 to 20 or 30 second trailer of on the itch.io community page, so look forward to that. Thank you all again for watching and participating in the Game Jam. I love running these channel events. If you have any ideas of future channel events, let me know in the comments. And if you have any ideas of um, mechanics that can be implemented in the three games that you saw in this video, make sure to let the developers know. I'm sure they're checking out this video and they would love some feedback. Anyway, thank you all again so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video.